Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to go back and, re and refresh a video I did four years ago about bare metal versus virtual machines, but you'll probably find I'm going to just be spending more time talking about something else that, that surfaced during the test. <laughs> You know, I get comments from my viewers about using virtual machines and not bare metal. I am trying to move more toward better metal, and today I'll explain why. I'd rather, and then other comments, I'd rather see these videos on bare metal, uh, and virtual machines are not credible for comparing systems. But are those assertions true? Are, are bare metal machines actually better than virtual machines? And is there a difference in performance? So I guess the answer to that, we, we're going to have to dig in and start measuring again and see, did it change from the last time I did this? And is there a difference? Today on bare metal, the, 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 the comments I see a lot in the forums and posts and even blogs and blogs that people do, bare metal has direct access to the disk, to the memory, to the CPU, and that makes them the performance kings, right? Virtual machines, on the other hand, abstract everything. They abstract the disk, the memory, the CPU. And so they have a performance penalty, right? Well, you know, first of all, you don't get direct access to any of those devices, even on bare metal. Linux has a virtualization layer. CPUs with, with performance and efficiency cores, they seem to handle the workloads accurately. So in other words... It tries to avoid the efficiency core for high volume, high, high contention applications that are running and prefers to schedule background jobs onto the efficiency cores. The, it, so you have a, very, a, a better environment there for these more modern machines that Intel is building and ARM builds. However, if you mix virtual machines into it, this is my observation at least with the ones that I'm using that are KVM based, don't seem to work as well. They don't seem to know what they're running on. They they look like they're assuming that it's all the same core. Four years ago, I I did this did this measurement, and these are the white background charts are from that from that video. So this is a 8750H. That's a mobile version of the 8700 core. This was, a, I think it was an MSI laptop, a Stell something. And uh, <clears throat> there was a six core machine. You'll notice that what we expect if, if everything was perfect and we lived in a perfect world, as I added threads, that I should see the red line should be where I'm hitting my performance. And it does uh, down up until it gets to five cores and then starts to break away. Why five? This six core. Why didn't, it, why didn't it break away at six? Well, there's the kernel. The kernel's running too. So, yeah, it has to have some space too. So, yeah, it actually runs out at the fifth. It becomes fully utilized at the fifth core. That chip had particular problems with throttling. Uh, that one and the, the night gen got even worse where it would throttle quite a bit. So it would actually slow down the cores pretty easily. Uh, the 10th gen, it got a little bit better on its management of threads, but you'll notice the divergence is steeper. Yeah, for where, where we expect it to be. And it, again, it's a six core. So here we're starting to see something happening where it runs pretty good at six cores, but then once we get into the threading, because now you're you're using up cycles on that processor. Basically, the way threading works is that hyper threading works is it soaks up whatever's left on the CPU that's idle. What about the ninth gen? So the ninth gen is really susceptible to to uh, 
the temperature. And yeah, this one's getting up to 97, 98 C. And that gets real, that, that starts throttling right about in there. So it'll start throttling back. And you can see that clearly here on the, about the jump between the 10th and 11th thread. This is a, also a six core machine. And, uh, and you'll also notice that on a virtual machine, something was going on at, right after it crossed the uh, sixth core boundary, all of a sudden it just went, <clears throat> it dropped out. That looks like, yeah, it was starting to overheat. So what about, what about the 12th gen? So the 12th gen gets really kind of weird. It starts diverging from the expected path at around two cores. So that's, that's weird, isn't it? So it's the, and the bare metal machine and the virtual machine are laying right on top of each other. That's why you get all the way out to the 10th, the 10th core, the thread there, and they're even. So they're, they're running exactly the same, but neither one of them is close to what we would expect. All of a sudden, once we get past the 10th, now all of a sudden the bare metal just craters. <laughs> it just, so the blue line is the bare metal, the green is the virtual machine. Uh, so yeah, it really departs. Now why is virtual machine still able to run better here? Both of these, now I should tell you that this is, both of these are Debian. This is Proxmox and Proxmox runs 6.5 for the kernel on the outside, because that's the one I chose. You have a choice. So I chose the 6.5 kernel. It's 6.5.11. Debian on the inside is running Debian testing. So it's also running a 6.5 kernel. Yeah, it's it's a little bit behind the uh, bare metal part of Proxmox. So that could be part of it, or it could be just the way the virtual machines work. Because... Uh, maybe Proxmox is better at managing those a little bit than bare metal is. So yeah, uh, they do their own kernel, so it could very well be tuned more uh, or tuned better um, than the bare metal one is. So uh, once we get out to about 12 cores, it's game over. It's, it's flatlined at this point. It's not gaining much. So those threads are all running about the same speed. And it don't, this is the thing about diminishing returns is this is what you run into is that it doesn't matter how many cores that particular virtual machine has at this point because nothing is adding appreciably to the performance overall for that virtual machine. On the Mac side, that is a older, that's the original M1 uh, and that's a Mac mini. That is my Fedora environment. That is, I just put it on there. I was going to show uh, virtual machines on it, but so far my luck in getting it to work has been goose egg. Uh, don't know if I'll ever get it to work. It's coming up with an error saying the virtual machine is, uh, the virtual environment is already in use. I don't know. Well, we'll track it down. It could be that maybe it can't get to the VM environment. Maybe a Psy has something limited there. I don't know, but we'll keep working on it. Uh, I have been able to get uh, ARM to work on virtual environments and container environments before, but this is the first time I've tried to do it on the M1. So if you'll notice there, there that machine is, uh, it is a four performance core and it has four efficiency cores. That M1 is different from the Pro the Max and the Ultra, they're quite different from each other. So once you get past the performance cores, you get past four cores there, you'll notice it bends down. That's when it starts using the efficiency cores to add on the extra, the extra performance. And of course, that stops at eight because that's the maximum number of cores that you can consume on an M1 is eight. That's it, eight threads. There isn't any hyper-threading on, on this particular ARM version. Originally, this is the 6700K that I ran as my desktop way back when. And so I ran the Unix benchmark on it to see what I would get. And the bare metal and the KVM virtual machine were exactly the same. Uh, no difference. They, I mean, there was like a point 
0.08% difference between the two. But so bare metal on that four core 6700 was the same as bare metal. There was no difference in performance. However, on the 12th gen, that's no longer true. The uh, bare metal definitely runs faster than the VMs. And it's pretty, pretty big. It's pretty big. So, so these are the pieces that make up the Unix benchmark. The first thing is dry stone. If you're not familiar with dry stones, dry stones are benchmarks that move strings of data around. Appreciably, virtual machine bare metal, same. Same performance, no difference. Whetstones is, this is floating point operations. They do a lot of different floating points. It's square root, cosine, sine, tangent, arc tangent. Uh, so it's doing a bunch of calculations and then determining how fast they can run on that box. The same again, bare metal, VM doing the same. However, where we start diverging is pipe throughput. So this would be pipes that are connected between applications and they're transferring data through the uh, pipe mechanism to do that. It's three times slower on the VM than the bare metal. And this one is just what in the world? So the syscalls on the bare metal are showing 3 million that it was able to do and only 621,000 in the same time frame. So that's like, what? Uh, <laughs> what? What? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, it might be, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Uh, so what about networking? So this looked like, you know, there was some variation between the two. And then when you kind of averaged it out, it was about the same, not one better than the other. This is one gig. This is 10 gig over here on the 12th gen. And I had I stuck an average out on the end. This is iperf. It goes, it tests 10 times and then measures each one. Uh, and so I was getting about seven point something gig per second which I'm not crazy about, but this is going through a Thunderbolt adapter, so I'm, I understand that it has more overhead. This was IO zone on four years ago on the 6700K. This is running a Samsung Evo 970. It's a one terabyte. On this one, there the, the reads were better and the writes were about the same for both virtual machine and bare metal, as you, you'll see here. They're pretty close, except for this one on the P read or F write. F write was better on bare metal than it was on the virtual machine, but the rest of them look pretty level to me. I mean, they're they yeah they. However, on the 12th gen, this is using a Samsung uh, 990 Pro. That's is a two terabyte, and the reads are extremely fast. They just burn right through that uh, versus the bare metal. So, yeah, reading on the virtual machine much faster than the bare metal. The uh, opposite, though, is happening on writes. Now, there's a couple of reads here. Uh, the P read and F read are over to the right-hand side. Uh, I had to stick them someplace, and so this looked like the best place to put them. But if you notice that on the things like the initial write, the random, the, the rewrite test, and the P write, those virtual machine did horrible. So whatever is, it, it could be six calls that are causing this uh, because the drop in some cases looks about the same as the syscall overhead. What are my closing thoughts here? Well, we've gone through some of the benchmarks I I need to I I'm not going to say I need to do more. I think I've got enough to understand what's going on. So I've kind of noticed this problem ever since I bought the 12th gen. I've not been 100% happy with the performance of it. The 10th gen and the other machines that I have prior to this all seem to be pretty consistent. If there is a fluctuation, it's usually because it's overheating. It's getting hot. And uh, yeah, and so, but this, I mean, there's just things that happen for no rhyme and reason that all of a sudden you see these big dropouts in performance. 
The 12th gen certainly is faster than the 10th gen, no question about that. But it seems to be, it seems to have these random periods of what in the world just happened. And that's, and that's just kind of the way it looks to me. I.O. is faster overall on the 12th gen, but it's slower between the, vir the virtual machine bare metal comparison. Virtual machines perform worse using writes and way better doing reads. So they've tipped, they've tipped the uh, balance toward reads and away from writes maybe. The 12th gen occupies all of the performance cores. When you get up to that point and you start getting into the efficiency cores, bare metal seems to manage that better than the VMs do. That's my thoughts on what's going on here. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to take a look at containers. Anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you liked it, please like and subscribe and share it out with your friends. And uh, I would appreciate that. Hope to see you all again in the next one and bye for now.